Mijn naam is Denver Kisting en Kletskompas is bezig om Ramiki uitnek te word. Ons bring vir ochtendse program vir u van die Wanderers Sportgronde, waar die medische ontbuit van Business 7 pas klaar gemaakt het. En vir ochtendse program, net hierna gaan ek loer na die voorblaie van die dagblaie in die NMB Media Holding Stel. Dit is natuurlijk Republika en Algemene Zeitung en NMB en Sun. En die gastspreker tijdens vir ochtendse Business 7 ontbuit, Dr. Ahmed Azadeh sal weer by my aansluit vir gesprek oor die revolutionaire toe waar my hy bezig is om medische dienste, specifiek basis en medische zorg, naar die gemeenskappe toe te bring. Bly geris in geskakel. And now our interview for the morning, Dr. Ahmed Azadeh is a general and emergency practitioner as well as a public health expert who founded Macquarie Medical Care in 2016, a telemedicine service supported by Dr. MacQ app. Good morning, Doctor, and welcome to Clates Compass. Thank you, Denver. You already had an address earlier, mm -hmm. which some of our viewers would have seen, but I'd like us to focus on the essence of exactly what the app focuses on during this interview. So, Let's start at the very beginning and take one slight step back. What was the driving force behind the app? How did this all come about? So initially, the, it all started with looking to f uh, provide solutions for people who had limited access to care, uh, couldn't find a doctor or wouldn't be able to go to a clinic easily. So we were looking at how do we provide care to them. And this is for the majority of issues people are faced with are primary health care issues, you know, runny noses, headaches, a bit of diarrhea, flus, back aches, you know, these, these run-of-the-mill daily issues that, that people are faced with. And most of the time, they, they couldn't find solutions. So we provided a telemedicine service, so they could call us at any time. Now, in order to be able to understand who you're speaking to, you often want to know, or you need to know, uh, a little bit of their medical history, what they may be allergic to, what the prior issues ha have been. So we needed to develop an app to, to, to track their, their complaints and to track their medical history and also a, a few of their wellness targets or uh, some of their metrics. So this app was really there to design to capture that information and improve the consultation that you would have with the doctor when you're, when you're speaking to them over the phone. Did I understand you correctly that the focus is on primary medical care? Please elaborate on that a bit. Yeah, so... Uh, so Healthcare is really, it's got a pyramid, and the base of this pyramid is, is primary preventative uh, medica uh, medical care. So that's really looking after your, your screening, uh, your preventative medicine, and looking after the things that happen on a day-to-day -day ba basis. Mm. So it's not there to look after that, that big thing that's growing on your arm, or uh, heart disease, chronic heart disease, or a heart attack, or any emergencies. You know, if you cut yourself open or something like that, you know, a doctor over the telephone may not be able to help you so, so well. They may be able to advise you on things to do and first aid and, and all of that, but with primary health care, really, it has its, has its own niche, and it's, and it's, it's, ex it's the basis of our health system, really, you of touched an effective one. Very well. In the beginning, you touched on tracking the patient's 
diseases, wellness, health. So because of that, you'd also be able to pinpoint on some problem areas exactly. or something to be on the lookout for. Exactly. If someone keeps calling about a headache every two or three days, you know, if you don't know that they've two days ago they also had a headache and they spoke to a doctor or they've already been taking certain medications, you won't be able to pick up any warning signs. And that's also what the app does is try to sort of highlight or flag areas that may be of, of issue or concern so that the doctor will be able to, you know, advise you accordingly. It's the same thing when you go and see your GP, for example. If it's a busy GP practice and they don't have, they only have those five minutes that they're spending with you and they don't look back in your history that your blood pressure has been high over a few times or that you're often complaining of this headache, uh, they won't be able to pick it up. Whereas with digital means, it can sort of uh, help you a lot more uh, in tracking potential issues. Because the information is readily available and exactly. sort of integrated. Exactly. So what happens in the event of you picking up that there's a pattern and that there might be a bigger problem? Well, that's then the good medical practice is to then say, okay, wait a minute, we can't just give you another panado for this headache, let's actually look into it next time you're in town, let's have a, let's meet up, let's do some other further tests, let's check up on a few things, or refer you on to someone to look at this in more detail. Targeting people in remote areas, mm -hmm. can you perhaps provide more detail on, on the target audience? So, <coughs> initially starting out looking at people in remote areas, exactly as you said. And mm -hmm. why that is, is because there's a lack of access to medical care. There's a lack of affordability of medical solutions uh, where they're at. And also quality of medical services in those remote areas. But essentially anyone who has a problem with those three is a, is a potential target audience. Because what we've done is we've optimized the access, the quality of healthcare, and the affordability of healthcare solutions. So if you're even in, in an urban area, you may not have, the clinic may be right next door to you, but it takes a lot of time out of your day, you know, to actually go and sit in the, go to the clinic or find a, an appointment with your doctor who may not be able to see you for another few days. Or productive even, time that you could Exactly, use, productive yeah. time. So essentially what started out as our target audience, our target market being um, people in remote sites with lack of access to healthcare facilities it actually can translate to an urban area or anyone really who has, um, will lose productivity because they're looking after their healthcare. Very well, this app embodies innovation. Mm. Telemedicine is still relatively new here in the land of the brave. What does the future hold, according to you, for telemedicine? Well, if you remember banking, we used to always go to banks and stand in lines and the vast majority of people are starting to use cell phone banking there are mobile apps for, for banking, and apps are becoming, we're getting apps for everything nowadays, shopping, et cetera. So we're still a little bit further behind as, as, a, as a country, and we are a slow ado adopter, but I do think that telemedicine is one of those next things that people will s become very used to accessing care via their phone, um, you know, for whatever their needs may be, looking after their blood pressure, um, speaking to their dietitian, or uh, speaking to their doctor when they need some advice or some help. Very well. This app, of course, relies heavily on technology and we know mm -hmm. how vast that is and how quickly that changes and advances. Do you have any exciting plans to sort of fine tune and refine the app? Well, it's, it's something that is, you know, our accountant has kind of asked us, when is the app's completion date? Um, and it's, ne it's something that will never be complete yes. because it's always going to be retweaked, redeveloped, new features added. And we have to adapt to, to technology, as you say, the needs, and new ideas that come along. So things that are coming in the future that we're talking about are sort of wearables. You may just put your wearable. You're a runner, for example. Your, your resting heart rate monitor, uh, your, your blood pressures, your uh, VO2 maxes, all of those sort of training statistics, we can track them and keep, them, uh, keep an eye on them over time, and you can sort of use those as your targets in terms of your training as well, for instance, but also to people who have sleeping, uh, you know, poor quality sleep, you start to have sleep monitors and things like that. So it's all about integrating da data sources in the most simplistic and usable and effective manner. I suppose you could answer your accountant's question with a hashtag, hashtag no completion date. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Doctor, as we wrap up, where can people access the app? How can they get in touch? How can they go about that? Well, at this stage, you know, we're 
we're very much in development in a lot of things we're doing. So at this stage, we're, our solutions are also heavily focused and geared towards corporates. So we are selling solutions for companies who, who want to look after their staff, uh, small to medium to large companies as well. Um, but consumer solutions are not yet ready. So this is a space that we're working towards so that individuals can sort of sign up and, and use our services. But at this point, it's still very much in the corporate realm. Uh, but I would say, you know, like our Facebook page, find us on social media, keep in touch, and, and you'll, you'll be well aware of, of when things are ready. You're a busy man. Before I let you go, any final remarks, please? Um, have a great day and enjoy the weekend that's coming up. Thank you. And have a healthy weekend. And a healthy one, too. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Denver. That was Dr. Ahmed Azadeh, general and emergency practitioner, as well as public health expert, talking to us about this innovative app called Macquarie Medical Care. And Dr. McHugh is there to assist you. Do stay tuned. As die nouwers by ons aansluit en wonder waar op aarde is kletskompas vandag, ons is by die wanderers voortgrond in Pionierspark in Windhoek, bykie ramiekie uitnek omdat ons bykie groter was en groei, die medische business Severon buit het veroogend hier plaas gevind en kletskompas het by hulle aangesluit. Nie te min met betrekking tot die voorblaie van die dagblaie en die mwee media holding stel vandag. Rebelukein, van jy sal onthou dat op 29 december 2014 was daar een groei noodlotte gebotsing tussen Nettie's baai en Swak op Moend, ses mens het omgekom in die ongeluk, en Jandre Dippenaar staan sê dat die interreg op antlag van moord, met betrekking tot die ongeluk, en die verhoor is stans in die Swak op Moend streekhof aan die ontvouw. Ook op Republika en sy voorblad vandag, kyk ons na die aksie van die ombudsman advocaat John Walters, op een aanval uit die gelede van die Popular Democratic Movement, sy president, meneer McHenry Vinani. En meneer Vinani het gisterochtend op een nieuwsconferentie in Windhoek gesê en verklaar prond uit dat Sains en Sins is die kantoor van die ombudsman gekaap. Hy sê die ombudsmanse kantoor onderzoek net sake wat die regering hulle gebied en beveel om te onderzoek. Advocaat John Walters sê, hy maak die verskonings vir vertragings nie, hoewel hy om verskoning gevraad vir individue of instellings wat daardoor geraad word, maar die kantoor het te min hul bronne en hulle probeer hulle bes. Op nummer bien staan, ons jonger Engelse sissiese voorbad, leile met die berug, waar advocaat John Walters ook betrokke is. Hy sou dalk in die nies achterkom die laaste ruk, dat daar drie sake is, waarvan een hewelik van die selfde geslagge element is. En onlangs het die rechterpresident Petrus Damasep, hy is ook die adjunct hoofrechter gelas, dat die drie sake geïntegreer moet word en voor een volbank met aanboorde drie rechters aangehoor moet word. Ons weet nog nie wie die rechters is nie en ons weet ook nog nie wat die finale hofdatum daarvoor gaan wees nie, maar ons hou die deurgans op die hoogte. Nou, advocaat John Walters, die ombudsman sê, hy steen hewelike tussen mense van die selfde geslag. Dit is natuurlijk een beduidende verwikkeling en een groot standpunt wat hy in die openbaar hieromtrend ingeneem het. Met betrekking tot Algemeine Zeitung, ons oudse dagblad, die Duitse een, hulle leid met die berug oor die onwettige houtoeste, wat die laaste ruk ook pal in die nies is, en die onwettige houtoeste het in die nationale vergadering gaan draai. Dit is waar oor hulle berug. Dankie dat jy ingeskakel het. Met die golven staan, ons land ons daar.
afsluit by Klets Kompas Stories uit, mag het vir u een prachtige donderdag wees. Groet nou. Van de sonslaat, de sonslaat, en sonne soep.